Hey, welcome to the Inside Out Health Podcast. This is Coach Tara Garrison. I am so excited to bring to you today Elle Russ. Elle is an expert on thyroid, and she is the author of the best-selling book, The Paleo Thyroid Solution. She is the leading voice of thyroid health in the paleo and primal and ancestral health movements, and she's also the host of Mark Sisson's Primal Blueprint Podcast. Elle is so knowledgeable. This episode is chock full of information. So if you have thyroid health issues, I would honestly go grab some pen and paper if you can, or definitely save this to come back to later because it just has so much real information in it. Um, and even if you don't have thyroid issues or you're just learning about thyroid health, this is such a wonderful awareness podcast. So um, giddy up, get ready for some great information. Without further ado, here is Elle Russ. All right, guys, I have Elle Russ on the line, and I'm so honored and excited to have her here, especially when we're talking about the ketogenic diet and women, and of course, this affects men too, but we are going to jump into thyroid today. Elle, thank you so much for coming on. Oh, I'm so happy to be here. It was so great to meet you in Utah at FitCon. It was so much fun. Yes. Elle, I have to tell you, I didn't get to tell you this, but like just watching you on stage, I was just like, I could see your passion just radiating from you like <laughs> it was almost like you couldn't give enough information that you just wanted to help so much and I really really appreciate that in you so I just wanted you to know that oh thanks yeah I get fired up about this topic uh, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah I can tell so let's get fired up all right so can you tell me tell my, the audience your background and like why you're so fired up about it sure so um basically the reason I mean, I, I the reason I even got into like caring about, you know, with the way that I looked is that I was pursuing acting in Hollywood um, 15 years ago. I still am. I've, I was on Brooklyn Nine-Nine a couple years ago. I mean, I've been oh, on wow. TV and stuff. So, you know, I still participate cool. in it. But at the time, and it's getting better now as we see on television, different body shapes are being accepted. But at the time, really, you had to look like Jessica Biel. OK, like mm -hmm. you, there was you had to be and, you know, I would intern for casting directors and you'd hear them on the phone and they'd be talking to an agent. They'd be like, yeah, your client's at an eight. I need her at a two. Wow. So when you hear this kind of stuff, you realize, okay, so I was like, I got to train like an athlete, right? You know I mean? I got to like train for this part. So I did, but I did what I now know in hindsight was completely wrong paradigm. Essentially at the time I was pretty much still on the kind of zone the, the whole, that was big at the time. It was the three meals a day, the eat every two, three hours, keep your insulin sensitive. Um, I mean, keep your insulin steady, which is a false paradigm as we know now. But that was the paradigm I was on. I was overtraining, which can lead to this. And we can talk about that in a bit, because essentially when you're, when you're overtraining and you're also not on the right paradigm, then essentially you are um, starving yourself and that will send the singles to the thyroid to back down and start to shut up. So then you have problems. So I was overtraining, probably undernourished in a lot of ways, not satiated. I was a total sugar burner, total sugar addict um, mm -hmm. because of my carbohydrate dependency. And you know, anyone out there suffering from like sugar or thoughts and food obsessions, it's really because you're on the wrong paradigm. Once you get fat adapted and you go towards a low carb, high fat paradigm, you, your appetite gets satiated and you don't have these issues, but I didn't know I was on the wrong paradigm. So I thought something was wrong with me. You know, I thought I had an overeating disorder. I was looking at Overeaters Anonymous. I thought I was effing cursed. You have no idea. And it doesn't matter if you're fit and you're a sugar addict or you're 500 pounds. It's the same personal mental hell. You're thinking about food every second of the day. You're making bargains with yourself. I drive around grocery stores. Mm -hmm. Oh, if I can find a parking spot, I'll get the donuts. Listen, I have been there. It is mm -hmm. horrible. And I remember thinking, are, is everybody else suffering and they're just not talking about it? Because clearly mm -hmm. I'm getting the results of the body visually. I'm hurting on the inside. It feels like struggle, mm -hmm. but this must be the way that you must do it because my results are mm -hmm. here. I didn't know there was another way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this was how I initially came into like just getting into fitness. Da, 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 da. And I did achieve that. However, I started to break down inside. And so the, uh, essentially my quest for ultimate health and my quest for being in the best shape ruined me. Do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. so uh, the, I'm just a victim of, you know, awful paradigms and overtraining. And uh, who knows if there was other some stuff there, there was a selenium deficiency and other things that lead to thyroid. So essentially, this is what happened. I started to get my period every two weeks at age 30. Okay. And I had perfect gynecological history in my family. Nothing was ever wrong in my life. Instead of the doctor saying, why is this 30 year old bleeding abnormally? Let's get to why this could possibly be happening. Mm -hmm. They instead just put me on the birth control pill. And at the time mm -hmm. I was a dummy. I didn't look further. Okay. Something's off. My doctor says to take the pill. 
took the pill. Mm -hmm. I bled through four different types of pills. At what point does a doctor go, you know what? So here's the thing. They never looked at the root cause. They kept testing a thyroid test that if anyone is listening, if your doctor tells you you do or don't have a thyroid problem based on this test, you need to run. That's the TSH. Mm -hmm. Don't let anyone ever base your thyroid health or assessment or give you medication or anything based on this test. It's a 1973 test. We can get into it later. But basically, they were just taking that test and telling me that my thyroid was fine and I needed to work out more and eat less. This is what lots of doctors accuse patients of, having closet eating disorders, not working out enough. He literally tapped on my gym shoes and he said, just use these more. I said, buddy, I'm working out two hours a day. I'm eating like a thousand calories. Okay. Like I know when I like, there's no way I'm gaining weight by the hour. I'm bloated. My hair was falling out. I was freezing. I had over 40 symptoms that are in my book. So eventually for two years, I was undiagnosed, mistreated by a shit load of doctors in Los Angeles. This is one of the major cities in the world for great medical care. I had great insurance. I couldn't find one doctor who could test me right, assess me right. Finally, I paid $600 just for an appointment to go see a famous doctor on like Suzanne Summers hormone book, one of the books she wrote. And I go into Beverly Hills and I literally paid that amount of money for them to tell me after two years to finally taking the right test. Oh my God, you are severely wow. hypothyroid. And I thought, are you kidding me? I had doctors misdiagnose me with polycystic ovarian syndrome, which I did technically look like I had. But the question uh-huh. wasn't is, what do we do about the PCOS? It's what caused this? Why does she even have right. this? No one was looking at that. So you can spend your life getting diagnosed and patched work up, but I guarantee you it all goes back to the thyroid. And um, you know, I, I don't want to keep going on here, but the bottom line is this. The thyroid's the master gland of the human body. If it's off, you're off. Doesn't matter what it is. You're depressed. You get Prozac. It'll work three months, then it won't work. You never got to the root of the problem. You got low testosterone as a guy. You go in, you get put on testosterone placement. You're still going to feel like crap a couple months later because that wasn't the issue. The testosterone was low because of the thyroid. Bipolar, thyroid, depression, thyroid. Um, yeah. Oh, you're you're you know. Oh, you got a bad lipid panel. We need to put you on statins. You test the thyroid. The thyroid's not working right. You're not processing fat right. Almost every hypothyroid patient has bad lipid panels. It just means that the thyroid needs to be corrected. Same with um, blood pressure too. Oh, you have high blood pressure. Let's put you on a pill. Mm -hmm. High blood pressure is insulin resistance. People who are hypothyroid, Mm -hmm. often undiagnosed and mistreated or undertreated, will get type 2 or insulin resistance at some point because they have no metabolism. So whatever you're eating is just not getting processed. So... This, I mean, this is how I came to it. I accidentally became my own subject expert because these doctors, over two dozen, left me in the dust twice in 10 years. The first time I had a thyroid problem, I corrected it myself with natural desiccated thyroid. I went online, ordered my own medication, used doctors for blood work, and then I didn't listen to any of them because they all hurt me and I knew they were useless. That was a very scary place to be. I was also in that position a second time in 10 years when I got a reverse T3 thyroid problem where the first desiccated sort of stops working or stops converting. And then I had to go to the last choice of thyroid hormone replacement, which is T3. Again, left on my own in the dust. I had to dose myself back to health twice in 10 years. This is unacceptable. And the only reason that that happened is because doctors are uninformed, period. Well, I want to commend you on not just complaining about it, but actually putting everything on the line to get out there and make a change in the world about it. That's amazing. And I love, I love when I hear that people's struggles ended up turning into their superpowers, you know, like now that's your gift and your mission in the world, but you had to go through that difficult time to get there. Um, I wanted to ask you, so for people listening, what symptoms of hypo or hyperthyroid could they look for in themselves to know if that might be an issue? Okay. So for hypothyroidism, which is underactive and hyper is Mm -hmm. overactive. Now hypo is more common and that's mostly what my book's about, but we we can talk about hyperthyroidism. And if anyone's interested, I did do a hyper thyroid podcast, number 163 on the primal blueprint with Dr. Forsman on my book. So if you have Graves disease or hyperthyroidism, go listen to that podcast. It's, it's really, uh, uh, it's enlightening. So Hypothyroid symptoms, wow, they are vast, but it could start off with something like this. You can't lose weight. That's one. Just changes in metabolism. Can't lose weight. Everything you try to do, doesn't matter what you do, you can't lose weight. In fact, gaining weight. Um, Constipation. That's a huge one to the point where like laxatives, magnesium, nothing you do will work and it's just really frustrating. 
being freezing all the time. Now, in general, our hands and feet should never be hot. You know, I mean, it, you don't want to walk around with burning feet. That's not. So when I say cold hands and feet, I don't mean like right now my hands and feet are a little bit cold. I'm wearing flip flops and I've got bare hands, like, but I'm not cold inside. Does that make sense? So it's mm -hmm. an internal cold. You've got to be one of those people who's freezing all the time and no one else around you is mm -hmm. that. And you test it by temperature. So in the morning when you wake up and you do a proper, and anyone can look in my book or online how to do a proper basal temp. It should be between 97.7 and 98.2. If it's below that, that's indicative of hypothyroidism. In the afternoon by 3.30, again, gauging parameters on the outside, like you didn't just smoke a cigarette, run a flight up the stairs or, you know, eat. Like if you're just chilling out half an hour, 3.30 in the afternoon, you take your temps, you should be 98.6, 98.4, 98.6, but you shouldn't be 96 like I was. So I was mm -hmm. freezing all the time. That's an indication. Hair falling out, loss of curliness and hair. Um, that's a huge one. Waking with puffy face and eyes. In fact, I recently, when I saw you, I had gotten down to a low dose of thyroid hormone. I was just doing an experiment to see, okay, I've corrected more stuff. Let me try to get off it again. And I did, and it really didn't work. Uh, several days later, immediately I woke up. My entire face was extremely puffy. My eyes were puffy, and I had some other symptoms too. So any... Um, general malaise, depression. One of the things that creeps in, it's a brain thing. So you, we have more receptors in our brain for thyroid hormone T3, which is the active thyroid hormone. So messy handwriting, not being able to read and retain information, having to read over and over again, mixing up your words like, like a dyslexic. Um, you know, I'm a fast talker. I'm bound to jumble my words now and then, but when I'm hypothyroid, uh, I will like a dyslexic get my words backwards or I can't find the way to say the word. And I've never had cognitive issues. So the reason I mentioned this is because this is a very scary thing that people won't express because it's scary. You think, oh, I'm getting old or, uh oh, my aunt Mary went crazy at 16. Maybe this is w what's happening to me. And it's very frightening to kind of express to people, hey, I think I'm getting dumb. I think I'm losing my brain. What you can tell in your friends, I noticed it in a friend of mine and was able to call out Hashimoto's. She had stopped taking care of herself, stopped working out, started to gain weight and was very listless in the eyes, mm -hmm. almost like staring into space, like someone who's got a cold is on cold medicine. And all you can do is just kind of stare into space and you're brain dead and nothing's fun. You don't want to you don't want to watch you. That kind of brain fog, we call it, is 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 a huge indicator. Any kind of menstrual irregularities for guys, not waking up with erections when you should, or issues with sleep, and women as well, waking up taking forever to get out of bed. That's a sign of low cortisol, low low adrenals, which is goes hand in hand with thyroid. If you've sort of felt like, what's the point? And I don't mean suicide, what's the point? But I mean, like, you're kind of giving up on your dreams or you're like, whatever, what is this all about? That is a sign. Because mm -hmm. that is a sign of what's happening in the brain and, and with your mood. And that is also related. Depression is related to this. So you think your teenager's bipolar, you get the thyroid checked. You, your doctor wants to put you on Prozac, you better check the thyroid first. You could treat depression with just thyroid hormone. So there's so many symptoms, everything from cracked hint, uh, skin, particularly a random one I want to point out. If you on your right index finger have cracked, dry, scaly skin on just your index finger and it won't go away no matter how much lotion you put on it, that's a weird sign. Inner itching of the ears, thickening of the skin, bloatedness. When I was at my worst, Every time I bent my legs, I felt like I drank a bottle of MSG or sodium. Um, it's, it's, um, God, there's, uh, there's over 47 symptoms in my book. I mean, it's, it's really debilitating. Those are kind of the main ones. Also infertility. So any gynecological menstrual irregularities, period, and like endometriosis, cysts, fibroids, any of that stuff, but then also inability to get pregnant and or miscarriages. So if you're planning on getting pregnant, <clears throat> you really want to make sure your thyroid is optimized because you don't want to go down the road of having a miscarriage unnecessarily. So many women don't find out their hypo until they've had several miscarriages. That's not something I want anyone to go through. That's amazing. Thank you so much for that information. Okay. So let's say somebody's listening and they're like, uh, <laughs> okay, I've got a lot of those going on. So next step, I know that you talk a lot about what the information that you're getting from the doctor is not necessarily in line with the science that's out now. So what should they get tested for and what should they be looking for in those tests? Well, first of all, I'll say the test right now. 
but anyone can go to my website, lrust.com. I have a free thyroid guide. It says every test to take, what time you take it, questions to ask a doctor to see if they even know what they're going to, how to find a doctor in your state or country. So there's so much great free information there, but this is the main panel. Now there are a million things that affect thyroid. Lyme disease affects thyroid. Okay. Heavy metals. Just, okay. There's a million things we can talk about here, but the basic, like, is my thyroid jacked set of tests? This is it. TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3. And then you want to get the two Hashimoto's antibodies because you want to rule that out. And sometimes people are positive for one and not the other. So you need to get both. Sometimes doctors only test one. So they are called TPO antibody. That stands for thyroid peroxidase. And then there's another one called TG antibody, which stands for thyroid globulin. So free T4, free T3, TSH, reverse T3, TPO antibody, and TG antibody. Now, the other important cofactors here that I would also get tested right away if you can, because if things are off with your thyroid, then I would suggest, well, then get these too. So if you can add these as well, you want to add B12, vitamin D, 25-hydroxy, that's the name of the vitamin D test, and um, DHEA sulfate as well, which is an adrenal and anti-aging hormone and a precursor to our sex hormones. Those are kind of, and, and you know, homocysteine, there's so many others, but those are kind of the basics to go what's happening. Ferritin is also extremely important, especially for women, but it can get low in men. Ferritin is iron storage. And I know you have a question about anemia, and so I want to talk about this. You can get your hemoglobin tested and it looks fine, but then the iron storage is not proper. Whether you're taking thyroid hormones or your own thyroid is working great, you need proper iron storage for those thyroid hormones to get to where they need to go. And ferritin drops in hypothyroid patients because of this. You get sluggish, you get slow, the body's slowing down, doesn't have the proper metabolic functioning. So then you eat, you produce less hydrochloric acid. It doesn't break down the nutrients. Your gut's compromised anyway. You can't absorb these things. So it doesn't matter how much chicken liver you eat, you will not be able to hold on to iron. This is so essential. And this is like a $50 test, ferritin. It should be between 50 and 100 on a scale of about 10 to 150. That's a classic range. You want it to be at least like 65, you know, if you're a woman. This is something so simple to treat. And it's very important that this is optimized because this could be the dumb, simple fix that will fix an entire problem. Okay. Like could be the root okay. of the problem. And, or if you have to go on thyroid hormones, you're not going to be able to tolerate the increases and be able to get to where you need to go unless you have proper ferritin. So mm -hmm. women being menstruating females, right? Then possibly having issues with thyroid stuff, you know, heavy bleeding like me, it doesn't matter if you're a meat eater, you need to get that tested. So those are the tests. And that in anyone, who's listening, if you're on thyroid hormone or you gone to your endocrinologist or your doctor, endocrinologists are the worst, by the way, classically, um, they've probably only tested TSH and free T4 or T4. If those, if that's the case for you, your doctor is an idiot. And I'm so sorry to say that. I hate to say, I don't want to rip like that. There's great doctors out there, but that doctor is an idiot. That doctor is an uninformed doctor who is steeped in 1973, 40 something year outdated protocols. That is is going to lead you down a wrong path. I get these calls every day. My doctor said my TSH is high. We need to put you on thyroid hormone or low. No, that's the test that kept me sick for two years. I had to get a polyp removed from my uterus because a doctor kept testing the TSH. Had I known better, would have gotten to the answer sooner, maybe would have prevented that from happening. Guess who had to pay that bill? Not that effing doctor. I did. You know, so so we right. really, and, and this is my, and this is so funny. Okay. So I know you've probably experienced this yourself and other people out there, if you're health coaches, where you have people in your life that no matter what you tell them, they will listen to you, right? You know I mean? It, it takes them mm -hmm. to get to where they need to go. You know, they can see what you're doing mm -hmm. with your life or whatever, but you just can't convince them to exercise mm -hmm. or we all have these, these scenarios. This is the same thing that happens with doctors. I cannot tell you how many times over the years I'll talk to a friend, I'll make a suggestion, like my doctor, my doctor's got it. They know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. Snap back in defense of their doctor. Guess what happens every time? Turns out that doctor screws them over. Happened to me not too long ago, just a few days ago. I got to tell you the story. I've had a friend for seven years I've been trying to get to go see the doctor on my book who's a functional doctor. I went and saw my friend's doctor like 10 years ago, and he was a total idiot about thyroid. And he has a Harvard degree. And so I told my friend, wow. hey, listen, man, this guy's a dummy. You got to get rid of this doctor. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He didn't listen. Okay. 
So then he goes into the doctor literally like a couple weeks ago and he gets his lipid panel done. The doctor's like, oh my God, your cholesterol is so high. We need to put you on Lipitor. And furthermore, oh, no. let me send you to this cardiologist. He goes to the cardiologist. Oh, no. The cardiologist looks at the, they go, yeah, you need to get put on Lipitor. Okay. Then he randomly is in the car and he's listening to a podcast I did the, a couple weeks ago with Dr. Forsman on my book about car, um, coronary artery disease screening and how statins are overused and misused constantly. And that, mm -hmm. you know, the, and so he's listening to this podcast. He's just been prescribed Lipitor. <laughs> he hears what Dr. Forsman tells him to do. He finally calls me and says, okay, I made an appointment with Dr. Forsman. I'm ready. I cannot believe he said I had an L Russ moment there realizing <laughs> that all these years, and he was so angry at his doctor. And furthermore, when Dr. Forsman yeah. said for him to get tests, he went to his doctor who's been with for 15 years or whatever. And he says, Hey, can you get these tests on? He goes, you don't need them. Just totally discounted oh, him. Wow. So, you know, here's the thing. Everybody in the world wants to trust their doctor. Turns out sometimes patients know more than those doctors. Sometimes patients who have struggled and won at a health challenge are the people to talk to. The best-selling thyroid books are written by patients. Aside from mine, Stop the Thyroid Madness by Janie Bothorpe, she saved my life. Before her book came out, mm. that was a fellow patient who saved my life. Furthermore, Paul Robinson, he's an author out of the UK. He's a patient, wrote a book called Recovering with T3. He saved my life. Their books were my Bibles. I only recommend these three, and I've read all of them. And it's because we understand how it feels. We understand what it takes, and we know what doctors are doing. There are still doctors in our space that are speaking at the same conventions that I'm speaking at who are still pushing 40-year-old outdated protocols. I get calls every week. Hey, I listen to so-and-so on some podcasts. They're still talking about this. So this is the bottom line. Do not trust a doctor completely. You might know more and you've got to get the right test and the right assessment. Do not put your health completely in their hands. If someone's diagnosed you, you have to learn about this. That was my mistake. Now, to my credit, Paleo Primal wasn't even Googleable back then. I didn't, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have even been able to learn about this stuff, right? It was like 2005 or something. You know, I, there, mm -hmm. there was information wasn't out there. Now it's out there. Do you know what I mean? Now I'm out yeah. there. So go back to your Crazy. test. If you're on thyroid hormone, there's also what happens is people are on thyroid hormone and they're not feeling good. They keep coming back to the doctor and the doctor keeps saying, well, it's, you know, it's not that. Kara Hahn is a perfect example in my book. She had two miscarriages, gained 30 pounds in a year. Doctor kept saying, well, it's not your thyroid. You're fine. Must be depression. Maybe we need to put you on Prozac. You're a closet eater. I don't believe you. She's like, I'm training for a marathon. I know what I'm doing. And turns out, again, they never, we looked over 10 years of her paperwork. They never tested her for Hashimoto's. Turns out she has it. They also never tested anything but TSH and T4. They were completely uninformed. She went home the day she found a new doctor who tested her correctly and fixed her and curled up into a ball and cried her eyes out. And that is in my book and her success story. And you can only imagine, I ran into the doctor at a CVS that had told me, keep working out, you know, he kept testing the TSH and he was, oh, wow. and I ran into him and I saw him, he didn't recognize me and I like lost it. I had to leave the CVS and ball down breaking mm. into my car because I'm like, you hurt me, MF. <laughs> no, yeah. and, and the thing though, whose fault is that? We want them to know. They should know, but they're learning what they're they are worth their weight. Mm -hmm. You want a doctor that's still geeking out. These are the functional medicine right. practitioners, the DOs, the integrative physicians. We want doctors that right. don't go standard of care. They're not all worth their weight. I obviously love my doctor. There's some really great ones out there. So you know, I became a subject expert because I was left in the dust by so many doctors. And believe me, it was scary to tinker by myself with thyroid hormone. Are you kidding me? I don't have a right. bio. <laughs> you know? So, right. but, 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 but you know what? Through fellow patients and through my own research and my own biohacking, I fixed it twice in 10 years on my own. So I love it. I love it because that's, th that's where you get the passion. You know, if you go to medical school and it's like, you have to take an exam on thyroid, you're not quite going to have the same passion on it <laughs> as if you're fixing yourself, you know, it's high, you're highly motivated for the best information. And I, I love your point that we are so lucky now that we live in the information age. I mean, I say that about even just my, my fitness transformation, getting in shape. It was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, 
I have access to all these people that can just show me how to do it. I just want to find the healthiest person, the person that I actually want to be like someday, you know, and learn. And you just go on this journey and it's all accessible to us now. It's so cool. Um, I wanted to... And side note on that, when we were at FitCom, my friend Elizabeth and I were like, okay, she's got the best body in the business. If anyone's listening and you want a good body, I need to call you. I'm like, what is she doing? This is amazing. You really do. I know Thank that's you, yeah. those kind of compliments, but you have an incredible body and really it, it you're glowing and it shows. So Thank um, you. you're obviously dedicated and on the right train. I would absolutely trust you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's been, it's been such a journey. And it's one thing I always say is like, I had no idea like what my body looked like or what my brain even really felt like until I started eating the right kinds of foods. Right. It just completely changed my life. And I was like, Oh, I, I can build muscle. Like, Oh, <laughs> I had no idea, you know? And so like eating, changing, it's really the food that you eat will just completely change your life. And I know, you know, that uh, on that note, I have some questions from my Instagram audience here. And the first question I have is, do you have any foods to add or avoid for thyroid health? And I would like to add to that question, um, supplements as well. So first of all, I do always recommend a paleo primal ancestral paradigm. It doesn't mean you have to eat red meat, even if you just eat eggs or even if, you know, you eat fish and eggs, but we have to, if anyone's looking or listening, just, you know, Google like a paleo primal food list and you'll take a look. What you need to do is get rid of the industrial seed oils. We just need to start to clear out the canolas and the BS and start incorporating avocado, mm-hmm. olive oil. So you can look at a list and go, okay, wh- wh- what do I need to throw out? Right. and Going down that path is really important. What's really important though about paleo primal ancestral or keto or you know any of these kind of paradigms is that it's usually high fat, moderate, and low carb. The reason we want this, so the, my book is called The Paleo Thyroid Solution. Not just because I tell you, A, here's, here's a natural protocol to, to nip this in the bud quickly. And I've seen people turn around Hashimoto's in six weeks, people. I'm not kidding. I mean, I have Amazing. seen, you, you'd be surprised. People just be eating wow. a ton of crap. It changed their life. Next thing you know, they have deflamed in like six to eight weeks. So it's totally possible to get there. But then the book is also about, okay, but what if you can't and you need to take thyroid hormone, all right? Now, the reason I wrote The Paleo Thyroid Solution, it's not just, oh, you got fat while you were hypo and here's how to lose the weight. That is part of it because while you're hypo, you do become insulin resistant based on just having a crappy metabolism. So you need to get on the right paradigm to get out of that. And we know that the only paradigm to get you out of that mess is a low carb, high fat paradigm. Nothing else is going to reverse insulin resistance. Okay. I mean, like that's just, mm-hmm. this is not mm-hmm. So it's not just about that, like, great, you can finally lose the weight and become insulin sensitive. It's also because being fat adapted, keto or low carb, doesn't matter. Being fat adapted is the ultimate in blood glucose management, as you know, and it also is the ultimate in adrenal management. Those things are tied to number one, your muscles not catabolizing and getting the most out of your workout, as you know. And also just because... Every time you're, when you're a sugar burner, when I was eating every two, three hours, every time you got the drop, you know, you, and then you need to pick me up, you need to eat the, the food and then you're up and then you drop back down. Those highs and lows, our adrenal glands do not like that and cortisol will come to respond. And so what you're doing by being a sugar burner or a carbohydrate dependent person in this world is you are constantly taking five steps back towards your health every single time. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? And so um, it's really important to to see that this is also a paradigm for the most optimal thyroid hormone metabolism. So it doesn't matter whether you're taking thyroid hormones like me or whether your thyroid is working normally. If you want to optimize this whole system, that's why this paradigm is proper. It's because of the blood glucose management and the adrenal management that goes hand in hand that just works synergistically. It's DNA prescribed to us as humans. That's why we get diabetes when we don't you know, follow it. Yeah. So does that make sense? Is there a new, uh, Absolutely. Uh, so, yeah. so, let's talk about this. So anything high in selenium, you know, rich in iron, vitamin D, most people who are hypothyroid are classically low in some things. So you can get some nutrients tested, but basically let's say you're like, Ooh, I don't have a thyroid problem now, but like, I, I don't want to get one. Get yourself a bottle of life extension selenium. The reason I mentioned that brand is not because I'm associated with them is because they sell the only the, the the most absorbable form of selenium, which is SE methyl L selenocysteine, and life if you can find it in another brand, great. But you can just get yourself a bottle, two hundred microgram pills, 
Finish off a bottle. Take 200 micrograms a day. Selenium is a nutrient that's depleted in our soil. If your uh, gut is compromised or your hypo, two Brazil nuts is not going to do it. And so sometimes I had a selenium deficiency I, I discovered at one point, you know, that could have been the selenium is really important for the conversion of T4 to T3. So that's something everybody can do to just go, you know what? I haven't taken that. Let me, let me see what that's about. It's an innocuous supplement. It doesn't really conflict with anything else. So, you know, that's something everybody can kind of jump on is making, they're getting 200 micrograms of selenium a day. Optimized vitamin D should be between 70 and 100 on a scale of 30 to 100. Optimized iron or ferritin should be, again, 55, 65, 70. It could go up to 100, but on a scale of 10 to 150. Um, and, uh, the other thing too, now there's a debate about this is like, oh, I hear that raw cruciferous vegetables are goitrogens and they're harmful to thyroid. All right. Well, the jury's a little bit out on that. People say if you cook those things, it, it eliminates mm -hmm. that potential. I would just say this, if you've got a thyroid problem and you're struggling to heal, maybe just stay away from a shitload right. of coleslaw and maybe <laughs> yeah. the okay. thing that could have given me hypothyroidism, to be honest with you, is I... Do it less now, but I used to swim every day. So immersing my body in a chlorinated pool, chlorine, fluoride, bromine, those are right. all antagonistic to thyroid. So mm -hmm. if you are a swimmer like me, maybe you need to rub your entire body in coconut oil first because it will last about 30 minutes. So that could help. Um, and of course, if you can either, you know, sauna afterwards or scrub. So, so, you know, these are things, you know, I was just talking with a, a, a mother and a daughter who has Hashimoto's and she's like the girl's 10, but she's on the swim team and it's just tough. They had to pull her out because it's just too much of a risk mm -hmm. to keep soaking her body in chlorine for hours every day while she's struggling with a thyroid situation. So that even is maybe eliminating toothpaste with fluoride in it and other things like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. What's your thoughts on iodine? Do you recommend supplementing it or just getting it in food? Getting it in food, here's the thing. So if you're like planning on taking a walking tour through Chernobyl, yeah, you might want to bring iodine with you, okay? but <laughs> short of visiting a nuclear test site uh, or short of nuclear war, you don't need to go get Lugol's iodine. This is what happens. Selenium, when you, when you like optimize selenium, actually regulates an optimized iodine status. A lot of people will research that. This is a problem because a lot of people will go online and they'll see that iodine is associated with, you know, proper thyroid levels, et cetera. So they'll go out and they'll take iodine. It can actually ruin your, you can ruin you. It can cause detox symptoms and it can actually mess with your thyroid in not a good way. So the normal amount of iodine that you need would be in salt, shellfish, sea vegetables. There is a great thyroid support formula by Gaia Herbs, G-A-I-A. -A. It has some natural seaweed in it and, you know, some um, tyrosine and some natural ashwagandha for adrenals. Nice. I do like that supplement. You're supposed to take like two in the morning on an empty stomach. If you're not taking thyroid hormone and you want to kind of go, hey, let me support this thing. I don't want anything to go wrong. That might be something I'd buy a bottle of and finish off along with some selenium. Um so awesome. iodine, again, small amounts. I wouldn't go get a bottle of kelp, you know, tincture. Yeah. Just again, here's the thing. You got to get tested and the proper test for iodine is usually a 24 hour iodine urine test where you, I've done this before because I did this myself. I, I, I've gone through all these where I was like, oh, iodine, I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, believe me, I've done it all. So back in the day, I, when I realized this, I went and got, you basically take a iodine pill and then you pee all day into a jug and whatever's displaced. I didn't have an iodine deficiency. So unless mm. you actually have a deficiency, be careful. Got it. Awesome. Yeah. And I love that tip on selenium. I use it every day and now I'm going to go order some life extension selenium. <laughs> I'm all about the methylated, highly absorbable versions of these yes, things. That's a great tip. Absorbable than the, others. the other ones have yeast awesome. in it too or some stuff. So again, that's why and life extension is a very clean, good brand and it's cheap. Sure. So that's why. Awesome. Okay. Thank you for that. All right. Because a lot of my audience is in the keto space, uh, I definitely want to ask you this question. What should be taken into consideration when eating keto with hypothyroidism? Okay. There's a couple of factors here. Let's say you're in this world, you're not on thyroid hormone. Okay. But you're gaining a lot of weight and you're like, oh my God, how do I lose weight? Some people go to keto because they're already hypo and don't know it. See what I'm saying? So let me just talk uh -huh. about that element right there because then what happens is someone will be like, oh my God, I can't, I can't. Okay, fine. I'll try this keto thing. 
but they're already hypo. So keto is not going to necessarily work if that makes sense. So the problem here is that people will blame keto. Like, oh, it made it worse. No, were you hypo or not before you even started? So I'm not going to buy that keto is bad for thyroid until someone can prove to me that their thyroid was perfect. Then they did keto perfectly and it screwed it up. Not buying it. Now, here's the thing though. If you are, if you have thyroid problems, because let's say you're obese. So for example, let's say you've gotten to the point where you're insulin resistant or you've gotten to like type 2 diabetes. Usually thyroid problems will go hand in hand. Then your thyroid will start to get screwed up because of the scenario. In mm -hmm. that case, going keto could possibly solve it because it really wasn't a, you know, it was like a self-induced thyroid problem. Right. Exactly. So, so, that, so that, that could be one case where then going keto would really, really, really help. All right. Uh -huh. Here's the other scenario. If, if you are a normal person and you don't have thyroid problems, you don't have any of the symptoms, but you're like, you know what? I've kind of eaten myself into a fatty. Let me, I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to get, get go to keto, see what this feels like. Okay. Then here's where you need to make sure you're doing it right. Oftentimes people who do keto because it's such an appetite suppressant will often eat very few calories. And then this can kind of put you into a starvation or, you know, like trigger the brain and the body that you're starving. So a lot of times people misgauge that when they're on keto because they're so excited about this newfound appetite suppression that they kind of go with that. And then that can get you into a little bit of a trouble and it can get guys into trouble too, just with your cortisol and testosterone. So again, that's another little bit of a pitfall. Here's the other one. So let's say you're on thyroid hormone and you're doing well. But now you're like, all right, I really want to lose some of this extra fat that I gained while I was hypo or whatever. And you decide to go keto. This is where you're probably, if you're going to do it beyond eight weeks, you might need to go get all of your thyroid levels tested after that to see if you need a reduction in thyroid hormone. Because as you become more metabolically efficient, then more calorically efficient, and then you go into something like keto, you become T3 efficient and you will need less thyroid hormone than you initially did. So that's just something to be aware of if you're on awesome. thyroid hormone. And I actually put that in, um, that's in Mark's book, Mark Sisson's book, The Keto Reset Diet, with that I we put in that little nuance for the people. So that's something that. you need to check up on. But here's the thing. Leanne Vogel, I don't know if you know who she is, but she's great. She uh -huh. wrote a book. She uh, is great. Yeah, it's coming out called Keto for Women. Uh -huh. I read it. I interviewed her. I don't recommend a lot of books, even though I read a ton. And that's a really good one. Now, she has a whole theory about cycling for keto during the cycle, your menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. If you're menstruating, mm -hmm. you know, where like the first five days, you know, you do this, but the second, you know, last two weeks, less starch, you know, uh, maybe less fat, but more starchy vegetables. She's got kind of a three prong plan there for that. Um, and I really like the way she works that out. And that might be something, again, to buy. Hack. Mm -hmm. The biggest mm -hmm. problem I see is when people are like, oh, I ate this, it kicked me out of ketosis, or they're so right. strict about macros. I mean, here's the right. thing. I pretty much intermittent fast and have an eating hour, uh, you know, an eating window, probably like you. However, there are days where if I'm hungry, even though I don't like it, I don't want to be hungry at 11 a.m. I don't want to eat around that time. Like I never want to eat around that time. But there are some occasions where I am and right. I honor right. it. I honor yes. it. I Amen, sister. It. <laughs> and it puts up my whole day because I'm a creature of habit. So I don't like that because, you know, I like a larger meal in the afternoon. So when those days happen, I'm kind of like, ah, oh, damn it. But I also know better. And I go, listen, if my body's craving meat right now, it's 11 a.m., mm -hmm. I got to eat it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly so right. This is how I coach my clients. Really and, that's, and I know, yeah, that's how you coach them. And that's how Mark and Brad and all of us at Primal Blueprint, we're always like, hey, it has to become intuitive at some point. Now, yes. if you're hypothyroid, and this is a tough thing when I'm talking to clients all the time. If you're still hypothyroid, whether you're on medication or not. So being, so like, for example, right now, as I talk to you, I'm not hypothyroid because I'm on the right amount of thyroid hormones that is making me not hypo, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm a normal person. You and I probably have the normal, same metabolism at this point. Mm -hmm. But if you're not optimized on medication or you're hypo and haven't yet figured it out, nothing you do is going to work. In fact, it's going to get worse. Do not go keto if you have a known thyroid problem. Don't do it again, unless that thyroid problem was really brought about probably because of, you know, blood sugar. Yeah. Blood sugar overeating and like, now you can start to go down the road. You don't go keto, but you just go low carb paleo primal. You know, maybe you hang between 50 and a hundred grams total of carbohydrates a day. That's a starting point for most people in this world to try to get on this plan. But I'm going to say this, 
as long as you're hypo. You are going to crave sugar and crave things. You're not going to be able to get the satiation and the fat adaption until right. the hypo is fixed, whichever way you do it. So the frustrating part about this is you're working out, even though you're hypo, you're taking steps backwards. The biggest questions I have from clients is like, when can I start working out? Or I keep working out, but I'm getting fatter. Exactly. So what's crazy is it goes against our intuitive nature as a human to go, if I do that, then I will get thinner. Like then I will burn calories. That's not the logic. If you're hypo, no matter what you do, it ain't going to work. So the key is to get unhypo as soon as possible in whatever way that means. If that means selenium and some iron and that does it, great. Maybe you just need to click, quit gluten and your Hashimoto's and maybe you just need to optimize iron. Maybe you need to get on thyroid hormone. Whatever way, you have to get unhypo to be in the proper state of metabolism. Now, yeah. on the other end, hyperthyroidism. People sometimes think this is what you'd want. Oh, wouldn't that be great? I can eat all I want and be skinny and, you know, poop all the time. And <laughs> okay, you don't want it because we are a Goldilocks situation. Not too hot, not too cold. Hyperthyroidism can sometimes manifest itself initially where the person's very skinny, they're pooping all the time, very high metabolism, high heart rate. This can lead to heart attack. It is very unsafe to be hyperthyroid. But also, too, it will backfire eventually. If you take too much T3 as a patient, you might initially burn some fat like a bodybuilder would if they take T3 to burn fat before a competition, but then it's going to backfire. Now you're hypermetabolic. Now it's increase in metabolism, increase in appetite, blood sugar, glucose, cortisol, and it becomes catabolic, too much T3. So this really is a Goldilocks situation. Not too hot, not too cold, literally. So um, people sometimes will hear that T3 is a fat burner and think, oh, I'll just take a bunch of T3 to lose this weight you will end up in a severe problem and you possibly could kill yourself. So don't just, just don't do wow. it. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, so that's hyper. Now hyper is, um, it, it, you can take the same test. There's also a test called TSI, uh, as well for, for hyperthyroidism and it's jittery. You're sweaty, sweaty hands. You're hot all the time. Um, you could even have exhaustion because of that high ramp up and, and let down of, you know, blood glucose and, and energy. So hyperthyroidism is also very uncomfortable. It's, it's not really a fly highing state, um, that people might attribute it to. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I want to ask you, we have about 10 more minutes here and I want to get into this with you because <laughs> I can't emphasize it enough. And I know that, you know, when you start working with people directly, you find out what's going behind the scenes and you started this off beautifully by saying, okay, I did it. I achieved, I got super skinny. I look like the ideal, uh, movie star in America because I'm skinny now. And I know what went, went on behind the scenes to get here. I had to starve myself. I had to overexercise. Is this what women are doing? And, um, I would like, I would love to have you speak on this because one par, part of my intake, and I do work with a lot of thyroid clients is, um, the, one of the first questions I ask is for their, um, background, if they have any binging or purging or overeating, <laughs> I just mm -hmm. straight up ask them. And as soon as I see that, yep, uh, pretty, pretty strong history with binging and purging, um, some anorexia, maybe bulimia. I'm like almost waiting for the thyroid one to come oh, yeah. next in my yeah. intake. Right. It's like, I already know that's going to come. And so I would love if you could speak to this, um, to women and kind of, I just want to get this out there that, um, you're not alone. And all, I feel like all the women are suffering <laughs> silently in this, um, obsession not all women, right? But so many women are suffering silently in this obsession to be thin. Could you speak on that? Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, I really empathize and understand what it's like to be a sugar addict or a food addict or food obsessed. And like I said earlier, it's it's horrible. It occupies your mind 24 seven. You eat a meal and you're already bargaining and figuring out what you're going to be able to eat later. Mm -hmm. This is, yeah. this is just, honestly, it's so awful. What Welcome I want to, to say to people, <laughs> yeah, what I want to say to everyone though, is that I thought that was me. I really did because I can't remember a time in life where I didn't feel like that. Maybe as a kid, you know, where I might've been fine, but I, 
I've really thought it was me and it wasn't. I was on the wrong paradigm. And I'm here to tell you, if you go to marksdailyapple.com, which is Mark Sisson's main blog, every Friday success story we have, it doesn't matter if they lost a hundred pounds or cured a skin disease. The end result is, oh my God, but the best thing is that I don't think about food anymore. So this uh-huh. is what I want to impart on everybody. If you want freedom from food uh-huh. and thoughts about food, you uh-huh. must optimize thyroid, but you also must go down the low carb, high fat, moderate protein and or keto paradigm period. End of story. There is no way to satiate the appetite other than getting fat adapted. It it, it just isn't. And when I look back that, and believe me, I was a victim of the eighties where it was like a low carb, you know, eat pasta and chicken breast. Oh my God. You know, we didn't know better. So I mean, I'm sure I just started a whole train there, but we (sighs) know now we know this now. And all I will say is this, Mark Sisson has a book called The 21 Day Total Body Transformation, or we have you know programs as well that, that do that. It really only takes 21 days, four to six weeks uh-huh. to completely turn around your body from being addicted and dependent on the carbohydrates. Now, the caveat being, if you also have hypothyroidism, you can start to go down that road and then you simultaneously start to correct the thyroid once your T3 is at proper levels, et cetera, you'll be good to go. You will be able to get fat adapted and satiated. Until then, and I warn people, I say, hey, look, until then, you might still be struggling with craving and have to exercise willpower. However, once you've uh-huh. achieved it, there uh-huh. is no willpower. I rarely uh-huh. ever have to exercise willpower. Uh-huh. I rarely ever think about food. I can't tell you my life is, I mean, I, and I still get calls from my friends who've done it too, where they're like, oh my God, woke up at 5 a.m., took a five hour plane trip to New York, then drove two hours, didn't eat anything, didn't eat stacks with me. Oh my God, this is a whole new world. And it really is. Now, here's the thing. In the paleo primal world, especially like Mark Sisson and Brad Kearns, like uh, us at the primal blueprint, people will hear them say things like, wow, I can't believe how little I get away with eating now. And I just want to say this, when you're a food addict and you hear that, this is Uh the thought. I don't want to eat less food though. I want to eat more food than I'm already eating now. I don't want to hear that Uh because you Uh can't imagine what it would be like to eat less food. So that sounds horrible. Okay. Right. And I, and I'm, I understand that. I used to also be a cigarette smoker and I couldn't even imagine. I didn't want to quit because I didn't want to not want it. I know right. that sounds effed up, but if you're listening and you're a sugar addict, you know what I'm mm-hmm. talking about. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now I eventually did quit smoking cigarettes, but, um, at the end of the day, this is kind of the same thing. So I know it sounds scary to people, but all I'm here to tell you is you do not have to literally lift a finger or walk a mile or exercise at all. You can get fat adapted by pretty much sitting at home, but you do need food willpower for about 21 days to a month. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's what you cover with. You don't have to go to the gym. I'm not asking you to get up early. I'm not asking you to change your schedule. So what does that mean? There are no excuses for anybody in the world. 80% of your body composition is diet, period. And then there's also the metabolic stuff that goes along with it. So I love the people that are like, I'm going to get divorced, join a gym, do a boot camp. I'm like, oh, you're going to fail. It's all food. It's all food. Yeah, it's all food. You can't blame it on like, well, I don't have time to work out. You don't need to work out. You do not need to work out. Now, I will tell you this. Once you start to get fat adapted, you'll be prompted naturally to want to move. But you can be 400 pounds right now and get fat adapted on your couch, but it needs requires willpower. And that's going to be tough for the first three weeks. For some people, it's not. For some people, only a couple days. For me, I had a tough two weeks. I was a sugar burner. My brain was getting unaddicted to the crack that is glucose. It was not comfortable for me. It did take actual willpower. Then a day hits, and that's the day where you go, oh, my God, it's 4 o'clock. I haven't even thought about food. What the hell? What the hell? Yeah, yeah. That's the beautiful day when you're like, oh my God, but I have energy. I don't even need to eat now. And what just happened? And then from there on, you don't go down too far on the train. That's not to say I'm not going to have a donut or two at some point in right. my life or, right. you know, but because you know it, it doesn't take you down the spiral. If you're a sugar addict and you have a good week and then you have a donut, you're effed because you're just exactly then keeping, right. you know what I mean? So you've got to overhaul it. Think about it, everybody. It's just 21 days to a month, one month in the grand scheme of your life to completely turn around a lifetime of like food obsession. And again, with the caveat that it might take a little longer if you've got a metabolic problem, right? Yeah, right. That's exactly right. Thank you. That's so well said. And I, this is my, my program is keto in and out. I also want to say one more thing. I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I want to say one more thing on that. So this is the other thing too. So 
a lot of people as well, they look, they'll look at someone walking by the gym and they'll go, oh man, I wish I had her body. You know what? Check yourself. Let me, let me look at her blood work. You may not want her blood work. She may be an inflamed right. mess. There are a lot of fit people out there that are pre-diabetic and an inflamed mess. And then, then the guy sitting over in the corner that's got the average body has the healthiest blood work of anyone. So exactly. this is not about becoming a shape model. That's not my goal, but it is about feeling comfortable in your body, feeling good in your own skin, you know, and feeling a weight that's comfortable for you. I also suggest this, and I say it in my book, stop with the scale, people, enough. Don't get on a scale. You know how you feel in your underwear in a bathing suit. Until you feel good, don't put on that pair of jeans you haven't worn in five years. I had a pair of jeans, this is how fat I got. So I'm 5'2", I'm very short. I am probably about 118 pounds now, but ideally like, you know, 115, 110 or so. Um, I injured my back a couple months ago, so haven't been able to, to crush it on the workouts, but not bad. Still feel great. Like whatever, a couple pounds. Um, I got up to 160 by working out two hours a day. Okay. Oh, so wow. yeah, that's really, and it's about 35% body fat. Okay. Like this, wow, seriously, yeah. it's really, really brutal. Um, yeah. and the thing is, is like, I might have at the time when I, when I looked like this pillar of fitness, but I, again, on the inside was completely inflamed. So you can get there and get to your right shape, but I say stay away from the scale because again, we're not measuring weight. You really should be measuring body fat percentage. And so I hope people know that if you're going to measure anything, just look at body fat percentage, but in general, stop looking at the scale because that's just going to make it a downer. Every time I would look at that scale and it wasn't where I was, I would just cry and then, you know, yeah. be in another state of depression. And the bottom line is that I always say to myself, did I need to do that? I know how I feel. I don't feel good. I feel bloated. Why did I do that to myself? Don't do it. Then one day came. So I had jeans at the time. I got so fat. I could not pull the jeans up past my calf muscle. So that is like putting on children's clothes, right? It was the worst day of my life. You can only imagine having jeans that used to pull right up my body. Can't even go past my calf muscle. So years go by, whatever I got better. I hadn't been on the scale in years. This is, uh, only recently went on the scale and I felt really good. I felt like, you know what? I feel good in my body. And I pulled out the pair of jeans. That's the day. That's the day. And they slipped right up. And I, that's, that's the tears of joy day. But don't do that until you feel, you know, and we all know how you're doing in your body. So don't do that to yourself. Stop the scale. It's not about the weight. It's about body percentage fat. And you know how you feel. Don't look until you're kind of there. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I've been there many times. I do body composition testing with my clients for that ex exact reason, because they actually are training in addition to enhancing their um, body composition through diet. So it's absolutely, hopefully the case that they're building muscle and losing fat. So it's definitely not an indicator. And I just have to say, I, I just love you and Mark Sisson and the whole paleo primal community and way I, um, even though I specialize in keto, <laughs> I definitely advocate more metabolic flexibility. That's what, it, that's what I'm about. My audience knows that's what I'm about. And that's my program is very similar. I, I didn't even know that Mark had that keto reset diet and I heard him talking about it. At, um, and that's pretty bad. That's a great that. book. The reason but, I like that book more than others is that what he understands that a lot of people don't preach is that it's, it's, unless you have a metabolic or right. like, um, health issue that requires immediate keto, like a tra traumatic brain injury or cancer, you got to graduate there. That's what he's talking about in that book is, okay. Hey, you need to kind of pass this test and get fat adapted over 21 days. Then you can kind of, you need to take yeah. a test to earn the right to get further. People jump into keto too quickly. Let's, you know, unless in, until you have to, I say, try to get there over the course of six to eight weeks. Um, that's, that's kind of the transition. And I am mostly keto most of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, but again, I am pretty metabolically flexible, so I can right. over carb it one day and not feel uh -huh. crazy and be fine the next and not be, you know, so again, this is not something that, and like I told you earlier, I will honor intuition when it's necessary Absolutely. if I have to. Yeah. I love it. I, I love the whole approach. And I know like, I'm just really honored and excited to be part of a team of people that are, you know, there's a community out there, this whole paleo and primal and keto movement that everyone is just feeling so good. And they're just so passionate about helping other people feel this good. And, um, I really, really just appreciate, appreciate your guys's message because it resonates so much with what I believe and know and have lived. And so, um, 
Elle, thank you so, so much for coming on and educating us today on all your experience. Thank you for being so passionate and digging so deep into this and sharing it with us today. My pleasure. And again, everyone can uh, listen to me every Monday on the Primal Blueprint podcast or go to lrust.com and download the free thyroid guide. Get on the right path. Listen to me talking about some podcasts. You don't need to pay a dime to get educated, to get a handle on understanding this. And I will just say one thing. If you're listening and you are on thyroid hormone and you do not know what you're taking and what it does to your body and how the thyroid works, get on it. Don't take a pill. You don't know what it's doing. Don't do that. You know what I mean? Love it. Love it. And your book is Primal. Uh, the Paleo Thyroid, Thyroid Solution. Paleo and you can get it at Thyroid. Barnes & Noble, Amazon, everywhere. And um, great Q&A in the back of the book with Dr. Forsman, not to be missed. Um, and it'll really give you a great intro on how to fix yourself. And it's some, um, again, you don't need to buy the book to get a free guide from my website to get you on the right path. You know, I spent a lot of money messing around here trying to get to the answer. I don't want people to have to do what I did. So that's why I did the free thyroid guide. Yeah. I love it. I will link all of that in the show notes here. Elle, thank you so much. Thank you. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode with Elle Russ. Make sure you go over to her website, lrust.com and get her free thyroid guide. I have downloaded that myself and it's an amazing resource. Um, and yeah, if you enjoy these episodes, please share them, share them on social media and tag me. Um, I coach Tara Garrison on Instagram. That's where you can find me most and also on Facebook. And um, you can also watch all of these or listen to all of these episodes on YouTube. My YouTube channel is also Coach Tara Garrison. Um, And yeah, if you are enjoying what you're hearing so far, please subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks, guys.